properties of parallel lines. What we're discussing today, please copy these two bullets on your uh, notes where the lines are. All of the following, uh, following are properties of parallel lines. If two lines are parallel, all of these properties hold true. So please pause, pause the video and copy these two uh, sentences. Corresponding angles. Color code. So I'm going to color code this. So you have the red uh, and the red here. One and five are corresponding angles because corresponding means same spot. So they're on the left top here, left top here. So this, these are the two lines and this is a transversal which goes through two lines. These two are corresponding. So please write, um, do a mark like this. And if you have four color pencils, you can color code. Um, you can, you can. Or you can just mark it with me. One and five, I need you to write angle one is corresponding to angle five. So they are same spot. So corresponding means same spot. And then two and six, as you know, they're in blue, two lines. Those are corresponding because they're on the same spot, type right. And then three and seven are in green. Those two are corresponding angles. And four and eight are also corresponding angles because they're on the same spot on the bottom right. So please uh, write these four pairs of angles. They are corresponding angles. Corresponding angle postulate. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. So basically, angle 1 and 5 are congruent. Angle 2 and 6 are congruent. Angle 3, 7 are congruent. Angle 4 and 8 are congruent if these two lines are parallel. If they are parallel to each other and it gets cut by a transversal, they must be parallel to each other, these two. Then these corresponding angles are congruent. So we need to know that's a postulate for corresponding angles. And we're going to look at the next one. We're going to look at alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles are these. Inside. So interior means inside. So inside the parallel lines, you have three and six. Alternate means like go left and right, like cross. Cross is alternate. So alternate is cross. So three and six are alternate interior angles and four and five are alternate interior angles. So can you write these two pairs? Angle three, angle six are alternate interior angles. Angle four and angle five are alternate interior angles. Alternate interior angles theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. So if you look at these three and six in red, those are congruent. Four and five in blue, those are congruent. So it only works if these two lines are parallel to each other. Alternate exterior angles. So ex exterior means outside. So alternate means cross. So outside means if you have this is inside right here, outside will be above this line and below this line, outside of this, these two lines. So 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angle in blue. And then 2 and 7 in red, those are alternate uh, exterior angles. So two, angle 2 and 7 are alternate exterior angles. Um, angle 1 and 8 are alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angle theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate in exterior angles are congruent. So if these two are parallel lines and you have a transversal, angle 1 and angle 8 are also congruent. 
angle 2 and angle 7 are congruent. So if angle uh, 1 is 150, then this will be 150. If this is 30, that will be 30. Consecutive interior angles. So right here, angle 4 and angle 6, right here are consecutive interior angles. Consecutive means right next to each other, one after the other. And they're inside these two lines. So that's interior angles, inside. Any angles inside here is interior. Any angle outside is exterior. So these two are uh, consecutive interior angles. So I want you to write angle 4 and 6. And then angle 3 and 5 are also consecutive, which, which means one after the other. Interior angles. Angle 3 and angle 5 and 3. Yeah, can you write angle 5 and 3? And when you have these two, these two are supplementary. So angle 4 plus angle 6 is 180. So when you add these two angles, they're 180. And then angle 3 and angle 5 is also 180. So 3 and 5 are supplementary angles. 4 and 6 are supplementary angles. So these are pairs of consecutive interior angles. Consecutive interior angles theorem. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. So I want you to write this. Measure angle 3 plus measure angle 5 equals 180. Can you write that? And then can you write measure angle 4 plus measure angle 6 is 180. Can you write this also? So when you add these two consecutive interior angles, they are 180 supplementary. If you add these two, that's also 180 supplementary. This is 180. So we're going to do a practice. Which angles are congruent and why? So uh, I want you to uh, do this practice with me. Um, here you have two parallel lines and a transversal. So this green and this green, 1 and 3 are congruent. 7 and 5 are congruent. So if 1 and 3 are congruent, 7 and 5 are congruent. They're all congruent to each other. So if this is 150, this is 150, this is 150, this is 150. Because they are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are congruent. And vertical angles, these are also vertical angles. They're all congruent. So all the greens are all congruent. 2, 8, 4, 6, angle... Uh, 2846 or 8426, they're all congruent to each other too. So if 2 is 30, 8 is 30, 4 is 30, 6 is 30. They are corresponding, corresponding, they are vertical angles, so they are all congruent to each other. So can you write this please? Angle 8, 4, 2, 8 are congruent to each other. Angle 1, 3, 5, 7 are congruent to each other. So if angle 1 and 3 are 150, angle 7 and 5 are 150 degrees. If angle 2 and 8 are 30, then angle 4 and 6 are also 30 degrees. So now uh, I want you to do practice 1, 2, 3 on your paper. So I want you to pause the video, try those three practices, and then I want you to check with the key. So I'll show you the key and I'll explain it. So practice number 1. If measurement angle 5 is 150, find all the other angles in, uh, measure. So you're going to write the angle measure for here, 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 here. And 5 is uh, 150. So write 150 here. And I need you to write the angle measure next to each number. Okay. So try that. Practice number 2. Find X in red lines. The... Uh, Find X if the red lines are parallel. So that's these two red lines are parallel. And you're going to find the X. So this one is X minus 8, this angle. And this angle is 116. 
So I need you to look at the theorems that we just talked about and see if you can figure the um, number for x. Practice number three. Find x if a is parallel to b. This is parallel sign. So right here you have x here, you have x here, and you have 70 here. So this line is trans transversal, so is this line. So I want you to see if you can figure out by using the theorems that we just talked about and see if you can find solve for x. So this x and this x is actually uh, the same. So pause the video and try practice one to three and check uh, with the video. So I'll pause the video and then I'll show you the answers. Pause the video. Here are the answers for practice number one. If five is 150 right here, then this is 150 because they are vertical angles. Vertical angles are congruent. And if this is 150, then um, alternate interior angles are 150. So that will be 150. If that's 150, then that will be 150 because these are vertical. If this is 150, that's corresponding. So 1 and 7 are 150. If 2 and uh, if 3 and 5 are corresponding, that's 150. You can use corresponding angles theorem too. And then how did I get 30? Because this is a straight angle. So 6 and 5 are linear pairs. They are supplementary angles. So 180 minus 150 will be 30. If this is 30, then 8 will be 30 because that will be corresponding. And then if this is 30, that will be 30. Then that will be corresponding. So this is uh, these are the answers. Let's go over number 2. Um, how do you find x? So right here, if this is 116, this across vertical angles 116. And then this one is also corresponding. That's 116. So right here, 116 plus a, 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 x minus 8, this is supplementary angles because it's on the straight line, and straight line is 180. So you can actually use this equation. 180 equals 116 plus x minus 8 because this angle plus this angle, they're supplementary. So what I did is I actually subtract 116 from 180, 64, and then I add uh, 8, and I got 72. So x equals 72. Then, uh, practice number 3, uh, find x if a is parallel to b. So right here, if this is 70, then this is going to be uh, right here, 70. So this is 70. This angle is 70 right here. So then 70 plus x plus x minus 20, if they, you add these three things up, that's going to be supplementary, 180. So this angle right here, this empty spot is 70 plus x plus x minus 20 equals 180. Because this whole section is 180. So what you can actually uh, do is do 70 plus 2x minus 20 equals 180. Combine like terms, 70 plus minus 20 is 50. Subtract 50 from 180, divided by 2, and x equals 65. So this one is 65, this one is 65. Another way of doing it is, since this is 70, that's 70, this angle will be 180 minus 70, which is 110. So this angle will be 110. So you can actually do uh, x plus x minus 20 equals 110, and solve for x, you still get 65. Thank you for watching the video, and please do the exit ticket that, uh, that I gave you and then try those two exit tickets and give it to me when you're done. Thank you for watching the video.